All right, there we go. Hopefully it works. Seems to be working just fine. Hello everyone, how's it going team here? And this is, well, first development stream in quite a while. As you might notice, I'm not actually streaming from my MacBook, uh, the platform I usually develop on, right? I decided that we will do the Windows thing today uh, because I'm feeling too lazy, honestly, to connect things to, or to connect MacBook to and set up everything. You know, it takes takes some time, so... Hey, we're gonna roll with uh, Windows and I thought I would just uh, develop things in Glitch, which is a pretty nice environment that I've been using for a while now and I think it should be more than enough for us to build uh, whatever we want. So today I want to build a chatbot. Uh, hey Renato, welcome to the stream. Um, so the idea behind the chatbot is quite simple. First of all, some of you guys have been asking me to build a chatbot at some point, and well, there we go. Second of all, I've uh, we've built an extension for Chrome before, right, for collecting the BXJS Weekly. So I have this, um, we have the BXJS Weekly repository, right, and I manually collect those links, I manually review them, then create those markdown documents, and I use the extension at first, but then the thing is, um, the way I collect those news mostly happens on mobile actually. So what I do right now is I have my Telegram app and I have this saved messages channel, which is your private channel. And I literally just share whatever I found here. And then at some point I collect them, sort them and create this markdown document, right? So I thought, you know, why not create a bot that would collect those links, categorize them and generate this markdown for me. So why would I do that myself? So this is what we're gonna do here today. I'm just gonna go ahead and start an empty, I guess, express project. Um, let's call it, um, what do we call it? Let's call it BXJS Telegram bots, right? And I am, uh, so markdown, we are, it's just bxjs so i am i'm planning to basically export this to the github later on but i'm basically gonna keep it very small and simple so i'm gonna write it here that's gonna be fine so glitch auto saves we do not need so keywords is gonna be node telegram and that's it for now node 8 express um so i'm thinking if we, so first of all i have never written a telegram bot uh, like i have i did read well, let me try that again i did write the bots but i never written bots specifically for telegram so let me just i guess nope not copy let me delete all of those things so we don't need i wish they had like a empty project maybe the hello like simple page was the empty project we got some secret environment. I guess this is something that you would not see if you open it as an anonymous or other user, basically, which is pretty cool. All right. Um, so I actually so far used the glitch only for some demos and like uh, co-op coding, basically. Not much uh, other than that. But, you know, it's a nice environment, so we're going to go with it. Right. Let's see. Telegram bots API. Um, I know that they have a pretty nice API. Right, and version 3.6 from February 13. All right, got introduction to bots and uh, let me think. So we need what? Telegram bot Node.js. We need a Node.js library for that. Okay, there's some I already have looked at and uh, Telegraph. Yeah, this seems to be two of them. They're major ones. So this one is Telegram bot API but it seems to be slightly outdated. So the latest one is three thicks. And while this telegraph thing seems to be three six. So I think we're gonna stick for the telegraph, right? Because it, it just supports the latest version. So we're gonna go with that. Um, let us copy the name of this package and add the package over here. Ah, uh, yes, please, let's add this one. All right, um, now the next thing what we want is, I think we don't actually need a server, right? Because telegram bots are, well, they are bots, so they don't really care about the server. So let's just rename that to index.js. And uh, I mean, we just wipe this thing and paste the Telegram bot over here. And I need this bot token thing. Okay, uh, so first of all, there are some errors. After, yeah, okay, because we did not change this thing. So it's gonna be index.js and it's gonna be node index.js. 
Right, and now the problem is this one um, requires the bot token, right? So we need to grab that token somehow. Now, let's see, introduction to bots, TechCrunch, blah, 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 how do bots work? Uh, Discord bots needs a server. I mean, I'm assuming this telegraph actually, at least by this start polling thing, uh, probably means that it's also using a server under the hood. So like, or I guess since it does polling, it actually is, wait a second, so it uses node fair. Yeah, I guess it just polls for re results. I mean, there's typically a bunch of approaches, right? So I know that the telegram also provides the API that allow you to do it like with the web hooks, essentially you set up a hook and then whenever the message comes, the telegram triggers that hook and basically then you need a server as well, right? Discord bots. I think Discord also have a different approach. So there's Discord JS thing, I think. Yeah, client. Yeah, see, so there's a way to do that without server. I mean, it's like this 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 typical pattern of allowing bots to be like webhook or polling or event driven or whatever. So yeah. Uh, hey, Ahmed, welcome to the stream. Uh, Stepper, yeah. ah, hi, hi, yes, welcome. Right, uh, so as I was saying, yeah, there's typically more than one approach to building bots, and I think Discord also supports Discord bot API. So, I mean, the, the thing today is that we're building this bot for Telegram specifically right now, but if there's interest, we could actually do another session where we extend it to work with other platforms, like, for example, Discord. Uh, so yeah, as you can see here, they have the webhook, right? This is where you need a server when you say, hey, this is my webhook, send the messages to it. But I am guessing there is also a way to just say, hey, you know, let me just ask best practices, um, keep it short, make it, yeah, okay, this is not what we want, FAQ, how to, there we go. Yeah, it is decay, ready? Yeah, so they, you see, so there is, it's not mandatory to do it via webhooks. So, and this seems to also provide, so you basically get event handlers, right? So you just, you maintain the connection, you get event handlers and then it just works. Okay, but let's focus on t Telegram. We're trying uh, slightly apart. How do I get inline bot API? Yes, how do I get my, um, how do I register a bot actually? Twitter authorizing your bots uh, when it's created. Now I can, yes. Um, how do bots work? Inline, I did available on this page. As again, I already been here. How do I create a bot? There we go. Uh, bot fa talk to a bot father. Okay, that is curious. Let's open this. Okay, so we got the bot father. Oh yeah, I did one thing with it. So, okay, let's do a new bot, right? Uh, how are we gonna call it? We're gonna call it BXJS bot. Uh, okay, so uh, BXJS bot like this, right? There we go. And congratulations, and you would, you can find it under, okay, so we got this link for our bots. That is nice to know, I guess uh, we're not gonna do anything yet. Help, and this is our token here. So I'm gonna throw it into bot token. Bot token, so I'm gonna just, you know, leave the token for now. I'm gonna replace it after the stream so that nobody screws around basically with the bot that I made. But uh, yeah, let's see. So we got the bot token, we got the bot set up. Um, the app is not gonna be shown because total install time. Are you gonna work or not? It's clear. So here's the question. I remember the glitch had some problems with the long running processes in the background. So the question here is, is it actually gonna, uh, I'm a bit obsessed with the semicolons at the end. So I'm gonna do that. There we go. Okay, uh, console. So is it gonna open, this is, oh, you can actually get the full con, holy shit, are you for real? <laughs> okay, I did not know that was a thing, that is really cool. Okay, now theoretically our bot should be working, right? So if I click start, it says welcome, okay. Um, so I, I can say help, right? No, slash help? Yeah, send me a sticker, okay, and we can send a sticker. That's my favorite stickers and it, okay, so it seems to be working, right? 
So I can say hi and I can say bye. As you can see, it is ridiculously easy to configure the whole thing. Um, I think it depends on the community you're a part of. I still use Telegram, Gitter a lot. I mean, I use Telegram primarily for like my friends' communications, especially like the friends from Russia because it's really popular there. And I also use it for saved messages because I just find it to be extremely uh, handy because you know, you just share it on mobile and share it in Telegram and send it to yourself essentially. But the problem is you have to go through all of this later on and manually pick up the links that you like. And um, it's just a pain in the ass. Discord has gotten popular. It's, I mean, Discord is nice because it's a community thing, right? So because when you go to Discord, you have this nice community, you have all those people and it's a bit different. So it has the channels and has the voice channels, telcos and all like Telegram doesn't have any of this. Uh, it doesn't even have a group calls as far as I remember. It does have nice groups that work quite well, but well, that's a different story. Okay, um, let's write, I guess, welcome message. Um, Welcome, um, I guess let's just make it like this. Welcome, um, to the, I get like, you know what? Let's just extract it. So welcome message and you're gonna be const welcome. You know what I'm missing here? Um, I am BXJS telegram bot. What I'm missing in a glitch is the prettier integration. I don't know if they actually have support for it, but um, community glitch doesn't really seem so at least. Change theme, refresh, wrap text. No, well, at least not yet, but that would be nice. Maybe there somewhere here. Advanced options, import, export, granite. No, okay. Oh, well, you know, we can maybe reformat it later. It's a bit, a bit wonky, but uh, all right, I'm a Telegram, uh, send me your links to store them. Okay. Yes, exactly. Once you use, once you start using Prettier, it literally becomes irreplaceable. And I mean, it saves you a lot of time. You just stop thinking about uh, formatting things, you know? There we go. Okay, so we got now the nice start message. Um, what I'm thinking is, Basically, okay, we need ta -da, da 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 So we need help message. Const help message. For now, I'm just gonna leave it here. Send me a link. Let's just call it like this. Prettier new glitch. I'm guessing they just uh, make prettier bookmark. Yeah, it's a bookmarklet. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know you can do that, but it would be nice to have an integration in the editor. I mean. Like, what was it? Code Sandbox, I think. Was it Code Sandbox? Or... Yes, there you go. They, they literally integrated here as a button. So it's, it's not that hard to do. It's, it's, a, it's just... I mean, it's not critical, but it's just nice to have, you know? All right, so we got the help message. And... Um, right, so... Let's see. So this is our... Um, basic commands, right? Now we're gonna listen to commands and we are... So we need we need a bench. Uh, yes, tag blitz. I mean, I think everyone literally uses Prettier in their editors right now. I'm guessing Glitch probably has it in the works. At least, you know, they are gonna edit at some point because it just makes sense. All right, uh, let me think. So we, we need to do what? We need to, so the thing is that actually I am collecting those links over the course of a week, right? So we need to create new episodes. So we're gonna say new episodes and here's the question. Um, new episode. I wonder if there's, wait a second. So I'm, I'm curious if we can say if there's like pattern matching or something. Here's uh, examples and they have to graph developer docs. Okay, so we don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. We keyboard bot, inline bot example. So what can we do? Context, uh, no wait, token bot middleware, session state, uh, token bots. All right, where's the here's rate limiting, natural language processing. Oh, they even have some middleware. Wow, okay, that is. Hotshot session Reddit. Oh, wow. Okay. So it has, it has a full fledged 
middleware system where you can plug in things even with AI, so you don't have to configure everything yourself. Okay, that is pretty cool. All right, um, that's not what we need though. So we need dot here thing, right? Or I guess context would also work. So we need, can I get a username somehow? Telegram instance, uh, this is the client update type message. So you get the message, you get inline result, channel post chat from. Okay, so we got the sender info. Let's see. So what if we do console log context from, right? Um, so in theory, if we go here and say new episode, there we go. Okay, so we got ID. I guess we can just use ID, right? So. What I'm thinking is basically we need to create, uh, I guess we would need some sort of a database, right? So like maybe, um, okay, Node.js embeddable uh, database. Like I don't wanna, like we cannot really spin up the whole, uh, you know, MongoDB or whatever on Glitch and there's, we don't really need that. We need something small because it's just links and titles. Um, I need to make myself a friend with this lol. That sounded more... <laughs> that does sound way sadder, man. Come on. <laughs> it it can be that bad. Please tell me it's not that bad. All right. So let's see. We got the NATB, which is not bad. I know it works with files. We got this NoSQL thing. What is this? Seems to be not that frequently updated. I believe NEDB is still... Well, it's also not that frequently updated. Okay. So what other... I mean, PouchDB is also an option. We got Locky.js, which is nice, but the I remember having a bit of a pain in ass setting it up. Why do we need a database? So, I mean, the thing what I want to do is I want to essentially say, hey, you know, create new episode, right? This creates the new set, new collection of links. And then once I take the link and say forward it to the bot, right? The bot will take this link, throw it into the current episode, and categorize it as an article, uh, demo, uh, update, or silly things, right? And when you create a new episode, or when you dump this episode as a markdown, you erase everything from database and start from scratch. So we need some sort of a state, essentially. I guess you could do that in memory, but if we do it in memory, that would mean that you know as soon as the instance restarts, it's it does not guarantee that it's going to be alive. So yeah, it's it's going to be a bit, uh, it's not going to be a very simple bot. So it's going to be slightly trickier than what you, I guess, expected maybe. <laughs> but all right, let's see. So we got this NoSQL thing. It works with files. It actually looks quite nice. So eight months ago, nine months ago, not new version five. Uh, yeah, six. Okay, you know what? You know what? Let's just go with NADB. I know that it works fine. Okay, now I'm gonna take the NADB and throw it into the package JSON. There we go. Okay, now we need to create it. So, yes, we got our. Yes, I'm just gonna create a new file called dbjs. So we're going to const, uh, what? No, const database. There we go. We're gonna create a new data store. Right, and we need to set up, ah, there we go. So we're going to say we're going to add it to file. And to make it simple, I'm just going to say it's going to be, whoops, database, right? Got the file name database. And I'm going to be module exports DB, right? So quite simple. Okay, um... I think, oh yeah, we need to say auto load as well because I don't want to manually load that stuff, right? And uh, okay, so now that we hear the new episodes, we got this ID, so we're gonna say const user ID, it's gonna be equal this. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to look if there is a pattern matching here, uh, where's the dot here? Is there, here's triggers. String, array of strings, regex, array of regex. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, if we pass, so we say, okay, starts with new episode. Um, okay, you know what, new episode, and then we can just say name, right? 
So I'm guessing uh, context. I'm guessing that now if we do that, if we just say new episode test, there, okay, there's a match property. Uh, okay, I guess like this, right? Is that what we want? New episode test. There we go, okay. So match from zero is gonna be episode name is gonna be context match first one, right? And um, we need our database. So, okay, I'm gonna add some comments. I need bot, um, basic messages. I, yeah, like I would wanna <laughs> use a bit more styling. Start bots. Um, do you use any special tools for sound when recording? Uh, no, not really, no special tools, just this Yeti microphone pop filter. The I have the arm here with a spider that basically dampens all the um, vibrations. And there's also the acoustic foam on the wall to make the room sound better. Because if I remove that behind me, it's gonna sound like ass. So you do wanna sort of try to uh, straighten the characteristic of your room. It takes a bit of a time to figure out how to do that. And it takes a bit of time to learn it if you never did it, but it definitely worth spending like, you know, a week to do that because the sound is gonna be like 10 times better. But okay, let us continue. So we got the user ID, we got the episode name, and now we need to say, so way, yeah, okay. So we need to store the new collection, I guess. Yeah, I guess we can just say, okay. Uh, so packages, da -da 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 -da. const db is gonna be require db, right? And now we are gonna say db. What are we gonna say? Is it insert or how does it work? Insert, yes, is it? Does it support promises? Here's the question. I think it doesn't actually need to be promise. I believe there was a promise wrapper. Yeah, that's the NDB promise. Uh, that simple wrapper. Uh, was it this one? Yeah, it was. Okay, so we're gonna use this NDB promises instead of a normal NDB because apparently not everyone supports promises yet. Come on. I know that you can load that. NDB promise, which one promise says, and then there is promise. What's the difference? Wait a second. <laughs> uh, so there's this one, and it seems to be different from promise says. Okay, I mean, this one has been updated way too long ago. Okay, so let's call, let's take the prom. No, no, that was not what I wanted. We want the promise says, yes, thank you very much. So we kill that, we kill that, and then we just, Use this one, right? Okay, and then we say insert. Um, okay, so create new. Remove all old episodes. So first what we need to do is we need to remove all the old episodes, right? So because we don't really care about them when we create the new one, we just wipe everything. And to do that, there should be a remove method, right? Um, db remove, yes, there we go. Okay, so we do db remove. I guess we can just say await, so we can make it asynchronous, right? So we can say async, await db remove, and um, user is gonna be user ID. I guess maybe let's just do it like this to make it simpler, right? So we remove everything with user ID, right? And yeah, that seems, okay, we have to provide multi true, I mean, for theoretically, there should not be any multi entries in this case, but we're gonna, gonna do it anyway. User ID, episode name, right? And okay, so we need links, and it's gonna be an empty array. Okay, new episode created and uh, with name and that's gonna be episode name. Okay, so theoretically, if I now run new episodes test, we should get new episode test. There, what, why is it? 
Wait a second. Is the am I reading the context match wrong? I think I do, right? New episodes, other test. Uh, okay, so it's actually from one. Okay, yes. All right, because the first match would be the whole string. Okay, yeah. Right. Um, so save that. Uh, whoops, that is not what I wanted to open. New episode, episode. 16 let's just call it like this and there we go okay so in theory if i now open the what was the console thing i completely where did i open the console no that's not here i am ah right i'm blind all right there we go um i wonder if we can actually yeah there we go cat cut so we can cut database right and we should see our Episode 16 and we see the old one deleted, so it works as expected. Cool. So here's, um, can we, you know what? We can just say that anything that includes HTTP, right? So basically anything that includes HTTP, link saved. All right, console log. I don't remember what was the message variable. So if we again take something and forward it to BXGS bot. Okay, cool. Um, can I make this larger? Yes, I can. Great. So we got update. First, we got the match. Can I input? Okay, so we can use match input, which feels a bit backwards, actually. Is there context state is there a way i mean there should be a way to get the message itself right let's see context where was the context uh context message there we go so that should be there right okay let's try that again so i forward something else like random link from here maybe no we already forwarded twitter stuff let's just forward this bxgs bot there we go okay uh yeah, okay, that's message. Okay, that's pretty complicated message structure, but fine. So we got, okay, you got the source, you got the chat, you got the date, you got the text. Right, so we need to parse out the URL. Um, how do you, is there any good way? <laughs> like, parsing the URLs out of text is always a pain in ass. Node.js URL regex text. Um, URL regex. Yeah, of course there's a package for URL regex. Uh, URL parse is not what I want. Here's the question. How good is their regular expression? Holy shit. <laughs> okay, then. I guess, yes, let's use that because that seems to be very thorough. <laughs> All right, yes. If you ever doubted that detecting URLs in text is a hard thing, then well, there you go. There's your proof. Okay, um, so we're gonna take this URL regex and uh, we're gonna throw it in here. And then how do I get the matches? Uh, so test, I mean, test returns true, right? So it just returns the regex itself. So I guess we're gonna use this way. So, okay, so we're gonna use uh, context message match const matches right and then we're gonna do console log matches to check what do we actually get right let us forward something else da -da 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 -da. there we go and uh it is context message match is not a function oh right uh, i'm an idiot because the message is not actually the message it is message dot te text right right yes uh from chat yeah okay so message dot text there we go that should be better so we take um forward and uh, nothing happens i guess no it does okay there we go okay cool so i actually got the url i wonder what will happen if we have more than one url here though so let me try to just copy some okay Okay, cool. So you literally get the array of URLs. Uh, so which I guess we can call it URLs. So get URLs from message. T 
text, right? Um, so for now, we're not gonna, we're gonna do like a super stupid version where you just throw in a URL. We are gonna always be working with first URL. For now, again, we can extend it later, whatever. Um, and what we are gonna do is, first of all, we are gonna uh, find current episode, right? Uh, first of all, yeah, it has to be a sync as well. I actually, you know what? We should also use this URL regex here, right? Because we want to match against the URLs, not just some random stuff. Okay. Um, find. Okay. And we need that user ID again. So get user ID, find current episode, the user ID const current uh, collection, I guess let's call it current collection. Once log current collection, right? So in theory, what we should be getting now is let me just copy paste this is a uh, come on. Right, there we go. Okay, so we need to update it. Is there a way to update the collection? Uh, DB update, what? Update, I said. Update, update. There we go, okay. So we, I, I guess we don't need to, can you do nested updates in here? Set, 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 unset, increase, push. There we go, this is what we want, right? So actually just wanna push that link into the collection. So we're gonna do await db update. Find the collection with user ID and push um, links. Was it links that we called it? Yeah, links, right? And we push there the first URL, right? That is literally all we have to do here. Let me just format it a bit nicer and. Uh, so theoretically, if I now paste that whoops, that is not a link. So if I do that, and uh, if I go here and do cat database, we should see updated thing, right? Cool. So we now have storing of the URLs, at least in a very stupid way. Uh, hey, Medoet. Uh, so the the idea of the bot is simple. I now I I'm like I do this weekly BXGS news podcast, right? We have this episodes repository where we have the markdown files with all the links for the news of the week. Currently, I gather all of that manually, which is annoying. So and uh, because I gather it using the Telegram by sharing stuff on mobile, typically. I decided to do a bot where I will throw in the links and I will basically, the bot will store them for me with the categories attached and then we'll output the markdown text for me. So that's the idea. Okay, so we now store the links, but we actually want more than a URL, right? So we actually want links to include an object, which will say URL, and then we'll have a title and then we'll have a category, right? So the category being article, new version, uh, leap demo or whatever. So we're gonna do that now. So first of all, get, uh, get URL title. So we need to fetch the URL title. Now here's the question, Node.js URL title. I like, I know that there is, can we get it through the headers? Cause I mean, you can, yeah, like with Cheerio that is like over, <laughs> That's a bit too much. Scraping web page. I'm thinking if there's a simple way to just fetch the title without fetching the whole page, actually. Probably not, right? So we're gonna, okay, let's do node fetch, right? I said node fetch, there we go. Okay. Const fetch require node fetch. Okay, so we are gonna fetch body await fetch first URL and uh, that is actually gonna be our here's the question do I actually 
Uh, yeah, so the the previews are typically done through the metadata in the headers of the page. So like if you if you try to look at the um, like if we take the GitHub for example and do view source, you have those meta tags. There you go. So there's this meta OG image, OG site name, and so on and so forth. And this is what you grab, but you still have to load the page. So I guess we're just gonna be doing that. Um. Okay, results, and we're gonna say text, right? And right, we're gonna wipe that. And uh, let's see, I wonder if the glitch is already banned as a bot from, no, it seems to be working. Okay, that's a good thing. That is a lot of text. So we are actually, here's the question. Do I just wanna grab the title basically? I guess we can just say, yeah. So uh, let's move that down. So we're gonna create uh, this somewhere here, regex. So const title regex, right? So because all we care about is literally title and then whatever is inside of the uh, title. Uh, global, case insensitive and multi-line is what we want, right? So what we want to do is we want to say title is going to be title regex match. Um, no, the other way around. Body match title regex. Whoops, I misspelled body somehow. Cool. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So let's try that again. I think I didn't screw it up. Yep. That seems to be okay-ish. Um, and wonder, okay, so yeah, we have the title, I guess, title tag. So, and then to turn it to title, we need to say title tag replace, whoops, replace, so we replace title, we replace, uh, why am I missing the buttons? That is a bit annoying. And we do, uh, blah, 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 let me think, decode URI component. No, that's not URI component, right? That's the HTML entities. Uh, so let's wipe that. So in theory, we should now get HTML, what tag title, title tag replace. Oh, right, um, sorry, apologies. We should pop the first entry. And now it should actually work. There you go, on the, oh, fine. right. I have to, well, that is not what I wanted to press. This is what I wanna do, right? And uh, send the link and there we go, okay. So the only problem now is um, Node.js unescape HTML entities. Like HTML entities is always the problem. Right, so we got this one, this one. Oh, we got this thing from Substack, which is typically a good thing. Cool, okay, I guess I'm gonna use that. It's probably, it seems to be working in Node.js as well, right? I guess, unless there is something from Mr. Sinrasaurus, which would be way better. Um, nope, that is no, okay. You know what, let's go for the, let's go for the end, why not? It's gonna add end, come on, come on. You're not reacting on control V. I guess it really doesn't react when you paste something in there, which is a bit weird. Oh, come on, not already, and. Come on, any time now. Now, really, you cannot find it? Or is it node end? Wait, what's the package name actually? Package JSON. It is just end, okay. Ah, there we go, finally loaded. Okay, cool. Uh, so we got end, um, where's the talks? So we're gonna grab that. We are gonna paste this here, const end, and we're gonna say end decode, right? Because this is what we want gonna do that and theoretically now our title should be nice and tidy there we go so we got our title and uh, well, let's try with um, 
medium article, for example. So in theory, that should work equally good, right? There we go. Seems to be working. Perfect. Okay, so we got the title and uh, now we need the category. So we have two options. Yeah, the glitch tends to be slow from time to time. I mean, it's a free platform essentially for running Node.js script. So, you know, can't really complain about it being a bit slow. <laughs> All right, so what we need to do is now we need to do the category thing. And there's two ways of doing it. Number one, we can just ask the user to do that. And I believe there is a keyboard thing, at least uh, in the Telegram basically allows you to do this context. No, it's not like sand code sandbox. I mean, you can see there's a literally here's the server, right? I have like the like I can literally list the root here. I don't have the root access to it, obviously, but I have the full on server here. So it is pretty great. Okay, so there is the keyboard thing uh, in Telegram. It's like the same as the context action in Slack or uh, Discord. So I'm thinking we can maybe do it with that. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Inline? No. Okay. This they they had. Yeah. Uh, this is one example. Um. Da, 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 da. Where's the GitHub? There we go. Right. They had some. Okay. This is Telegraph. Where is the examples again? Okay. They are in some subfolder. Right. Uh, in like keyboard bot. There we go. This is what we want. So we just say a reply. Okay, so this context reply markup keyboards. Okay, so how do you Oh, I guess I have to maintain state for that. A bit weird. Context reply extra markup. How do you handle the reply from that? I mean, I imagine this basically triggers another command, right? Yeah, it does triggers another command. So you have to remember what you were doing, which makes it way more complicated. Like ideally, I would want to have a integrated classifier that would just say, hey, is that the correct category? Um, I guess we could just do it in memory. So Let's just say memory storage on st memory store. And it's just going to be an object, right? And then instead of writing it to the database, what we are going to do is we're going to say memory store. So was it memory storage? Why doesn't it have yeah, memory store from user ID? is going to be equal this, right? So we pre populate it. And then we reply, but we reply with this keyboard, right? So we say uh, context reply extra markup. What was this simple one? And one time reset. I don't know what all of that does. So we're just gonna link ready to save. So we're gonna make it a bit more verbose. Uh, let's make it title. What? Um, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. What category should it be? Right? And I guess let's put some quotes around that. And then we do markup. Keyboard one time resize. I don't know what those things like extra resize. What is this markup? Where does it come from actually? Uh, reply markup, telegraph markup. There we go. Okay, so let's do that. So markup keyboard. So this is gonna, okay, we got categories article. We got categories. Um, man, I forgot BXGS. What kind of categories did we have? We had what we had, well, uh, this one doesn't even have categories. <laughs> Articles, uh, okay, article, we got releases, release, we got lib, and we got silly, right? Okay, um, 
Here's the question. What the hell do those... Whoops, that is not what I wanted. I did not want to save it. So, keyboard... Uh... Yes, exactly. That was my idea in the long run. Basically, we can add the basic very... I, I don't even think you would need a neural network in here. You can just add a stupid, like, vector classifier or something among those lines. But yeah, you can definitely automate it and train it every time you add the link, the user will say, hey, this is this. And at some point, the classifier would say, hey, is this correct? And instead of saying what category is this, you will say yes or no. And when the uh, precision is above, I don't know, 95%, it would just say, hey, I saved it as this. Okay, so we need this keyboard. So markup, what is this, mar what is this? markup? There we go. Got the markup. We got uh, where is the full docs for it? Markup. Um, no, that doesn't show us any any docs. Extra the examples. No, this is okay. I I'm confused. I don't know what those things do. You know what? Let's just try it like this. I guess we have to also create the bot here is right so we need another bot here and in this case is gonna be or is it here's or is it command no i guess it is command article and we're gonna just say context reply saving link okay we need the we need to extract it back from the memory store right uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. And it's gonna be gonna command this for now. Uh, title. Okay, so in theory, if we now do this, there we go. We got the keyboard. Okay, so I literally should name those properly. First of all, it's gonna be article, please. Article. Okay, let's call it, you know what, article and news, releases, libs and demos. Let's be consistent. Silly. Uh, what, what, how did I call it in my BXJS repo? Was it silly stuff? Yes, it was silly stuff. So let's call it silly stuff. Let's be consistent. I mean, theoretically, what you would want to do is to allow creating those categories through the commands as well, but we're not gonna spend time on this yet because again, you know, we need a separate database, managing those categories, creating them, deleting, that's too too much time. Okay, um, I guess there's gonna be articles and news, right? So let's try this again. Uh, yes, this is not gonna do anything. Yes, article and news and nice, it works. Okay, so you literally do this. So we get this, um, this thing, const link object, let's call it link object. So we have this thing, right? We say that link object category, category is gonna be articles and use right and uh, after that we actually have to write it down so uh, push links and we paste in here link object done so in theory saved link as in okay save link into articles and use right so we got this and when we need to do the same for this thing so i guess you know what i'm just gonna simplify it a bit uh, let's call this thing uh da -da 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 -da, const categories so we're just gonna do it like this categories list right so we're gonna Throw this in here. Now I'm gonna say categories for each category. Uh, ca ca no, what category? There we go. So I'm just gonna automate that a bit, right? So I'm gonna get bot here. So if we here category, we're gonna assign that category, and we're gonna push that 
into okay and this should be category and we're done so right so this theoretically should write our links let's try this so i can go to the very first link i have here forward it to the vxgs bot so this is quokka rapid prototyping articles and news that link cool okay so i think theoretically this should work uh, let's see cat database uh, okay, it has a bunch of deleted stuff, but does it have the correct category, blah, blah, blah? Yes, it does, okay. So now we need to implement the methods. Um, this is gonna be category handling, handling, and come on. And finally, we need a method that will generate a markdown for us, right? So it's gonna be bot here's, um, let's call it to okay. Um, you know what? Generate markdown. I probably should use insensitive regex matching anywhere, uh, like everywhere, not anywhere, because it is annoying to capitalize things and it's annoying to not capitalize them on mobiles because you have to do that manually, right? Beyond, yeah. So okay, this doesn't matter. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, cool. So in generate markdown, we got the user ID. We have to find that. Um, so we got to find that thing. Const collection awaits db find user ID, right? And then we say context reply markdown. So we're gonna say const markdown is gonna be, let's just stringify this thing to see if that actually works, right? So, uh, okay, generate markdown. Hey, okay. That has a <laughs> way too many links. Okay, I think we should um, remove this database thing and then do some I did reformatting, so it's gonna restart the bot. It's let's do a new episodes. Or I guess you know what? I'm calling it new episode, but it's actually not the episode, it's collection, right? So let's call it new collection. And then we're gonna uh, rename this into collection name. An episode collection name created new collection created with a name yes okay episodes and current collection okay so that should be better generate markdown all right um so new collection let's call it episode 16 again there we go Okay, now we take some message here and forward it to the XGS bot. And this is gonna be release. Now we take some other message like, uh, where was the, like this one and forward it here. This is gonna be article and news. And then we say generate markdown. And uh, well, it looks a bit ugly, but we got the URL with title Gatsby, Gatsby to its releases, and we got this one. Well, yeah, there you go. Okay. So now that we have our collection, right, we actually say const links. So we get the links from the, because we don't really care about all the other things, right? We just want links. And now we need to split those links into the categories. Um, you know what? I'm going to be lazy and just use Lodash for it uh, because I know that Lodash is amazing and has a lot of really useful utilities. Since we're running on a server, we're not really concerned about the memory and you know all the other stuff. I mean, the uh, bundle size and all that kind of stuff. Um, what's a group by? Yeah, exactly. This is what I want. Uh, so const require Lodash, right? And we say const grouped links is gonna be group by. 
Um, how does it? What's the? So we pass in the collection, which is going to be links, and how do you pass in by length? But we group by um, we group by category, right? Category. Okay, for now we're just gonna game mark down grouped links, right? So generate markdown. Nope, I screwed something up. Uh, what did I do wrong? We got this. Oh, it. Uh, I guess it should be a function. So we pass in an item. Item cate category. Is that is that what you want? Generate markdown. Well, that that is not a thing. Markdown. Nope. Hmm? What am I doing wrong? To transform keys. Creates an object composed of keys generated from the results of running each element through iterating. Yes. So theoretically, am I missing something? Wait, uh, JSON stringify. Wait a second. So am I just misunderstanding the format? Whoops, what? Message text is empty. Oh, the links is empty. Okay, collection. What, what am I doing wrong? Wait a second, did I? Screw screw up the naming of the variables as usual. So oh, okay, is it gets is there a find one method? There's ought to be find one method, right? There we go. Okay, now I can do links and that should work. And group links, right? Generate that. Okay, cool. Now we have it by category. And uh, so what we do now is we say categories, right? Map category. So we take our categories um, array that we already had before, right? We don't need that anymore. We say groups links from category. So this is going to be our links and well, let me think about it. So we need to map it into a string, right? And then reduce it into a markdown. Okay, so we map it const string. This is gonna be, okay, I guess it's this way. Category, right? And slash n. And then uh, we're gonna do this and then gonna do for each. Or I guess you could just map it to is let's just be functional. You know what? Um, whoops. Map. So it's going to be link. And we're going to map it into. So minus uh, there's going to be link title, right? And this is going to be link URL. So in theory, and then slash n at the end. I guess we could also do slash n here. Keep it in one line. And I guess we don't really need to just do return right here, even like this. It looks a bit ugly. You know what? No, what's um, const? I'm just gonna compile it from a bunch of strings because it is just nicer this way. Okay, uh, so this is gonna be links and we're gonna return header and links. Okay, this is way more readable. It's just, just because of that. And then we're gonna reduce it, accumulator value. It's gonna be accumulator plus value. And we're gonna start with an empty string. So, um, generate markdown and something broke. Probably cannot read map of undefined. 
Um, okay, categories is the right array. Yes, it is. Okay. So, grouped links, category, yes. Um, okay, let's try... Am I forgetting again what this thing is? Stringify null two. Uh, whoops. Okay. Um, no. Okay, so we got the releases and then it's an array of objects. Yeah, so it should be map. It should be able to map over it, right? So links. Oh, right, I'm an idiot. Okay, um, you cannot really. So this map. Yes, this should work, right? Because we got this array of things that has URL title and category. And this thing should be also reduced later value. Later plus value, start with the string. Okay, let's try that again. What? And read property map of undefined. Oh, right, because... Um, because we don't have yet links in some of the categories, that's why it's complaining. So what we have to do is we have to say if it exists, otherwise it's just gonna be no links yet. There we go. This is what we should do, right? So kill that and that is very long titles. But I guess that's what you would expect from auto-generated tiles from the Twitter uh, Twitter links, right? So if we actually copy that, um, what was it? Stack edits the markdown app, right? And uh, well, yeah, okay, that's the. That does require some work. Okay, that is not. It's literally the whole tweet in there. Ads be on Twitter. No links yet, and I guess we have to put in a slash n before the the category, right? So it has to be like this. Okay, and now we need to fix the tie. I wonder if there's so the problem is with the Twitter primarily, right? So if we take some status, is there a better way than what? What? I'm sorry, what? Title Twitter. No, that's just just plain out lies. It's not Twitter. Okay, what kind of metadata do you have here, Twitter? Link, 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 link. Meta, Meta Swift title. So yeah, <laughs> Twitter literally puts the whole tweet into title, which is, I guess it's okay. It's a bit annoying. But you know what? Okay, you know what we can do? We, whoops, again, wrong button. We can just, we can sanitize it. So let's create a function. Helper functions, const sanitize title. It's gonna be title and it's gonna be title. Replace, um, we're gonna replace everything slash n slash r slash t plus uh, whoops like this global multi-line and replace it for spacebar so let's try and see if that actually happens because i mean i don't really care much about that right now because i i have to proofread this thing and re sort of reformat it anyway myself right so because i prepare it for the uh for the release but at least it has to be slightly readable. Okay, that looks way better. I think if we if we paste it here, there we go. Okay, that's now better. Now the problem is there is no, okay, so there should be line breaks after that stuff. And 
wanted to do something else. Oh yeah, um, tw uh, the I know that Telegram supports Markdown, so that this is um, we can take this actually and call it on generate Markdown. So I'm gonna paste this here. And I'm gonna return markdown, right? And this is gonna be a sync and it's gonna take user ID as an argument. Okay, so we can now have this function. We can just say await generate markdown user ID. That's literally all we have to do, right? Very nice. Okay, so this is gonna generate the markdown. Now I know that Telegram supports uh, Markdown, right? So if you like go here and say hello world like this, for example, you will see that it's actually italic. How do you send it from the bot? Here's the question. I guess, is it like markup? They have to do markup thing. Um, Du, 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 du. Echo example bots, webhook, live location, cleaning webhook wizard. Uh, media bot, is that what you want to do? Uh, reply with photo. No, this is, this is not. What do we want? Example, echo. Okay, let me, you know what, mark down. Um, unfortunately, there is no bot in here, but there should be a discord link in the description for my channel. Or if you give me a second, I can actually share it to you right now because I probably should set up some sort of a Twitch bot. I am, I'm a terrible streaming person. Like I literally have everything broken. I might as well create a chatbot for Twitch. Yes, that is that might not be a bad idea. Let me just pause this thing. There is a link somewhere, somewhere here. There you go. I am gonna be your manual Discord bot. <laughs> okay. Um. So extra markdown. Uh, parse mode markdown. Extra markdown. Aha. Uh -huh. So how do you how do you actually do that? What is this extra thing? Reply with photo, extra markdown, context reply, extra, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. So we want, we have this generate markdown, right? And we want this generate, let's call it generate preview. And, and uh, I guess this extra thing is extra. Um, probably required from some requ um, extra require how they what the um, yes the setup is quite nice I mean I've been streaming for quite some time now but I'm just generally terrible at it you know it's good setup doesn't really help much <laughs> okay um, let me see um, what was the again the example stuff there we go um, extra no, that but search in this repository. Yes, please. X ah, okay, I can just do that. Okay, I pro yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's just do that. There we go. Okay, so theoretically, if we do generate preview now, uh, where's the bot? Generate preview. We uh, nope, that is still hey, it is markdown. Okay, cool. It just doesn't support headers, I guess. Right, so the question is, how do you, can you turn off those previews because they are breaking everything. So, preview. Okay, Telegram bot disable preview. I disable link preview in channels. Yes. Uh, send method to disable web page preview argument. Okay. Here's the question, is it an extras package? And if it is an extras package, okay, this is the docs. Oh God, why is it so hard? Context replicators, extra, there we go. Um, markup, markdown, web preview value. So I guess we say 
web preview false markdown web preview false is that what you want me to say um ta -da -da -da. i guess extra there you go uh what was up i'm sorry I i'm missing the convo <laughs> Okay, uh, so generate preview. Yes, awesome. Generate markdown. And we get the proper markdown. I can just right click it and say copy text. And then I launch my VS code. And uh, I should be able to just say what? No, just please do control M markdown. It works. It frigging works. Perfect, De demo, I misspelled demos, but that's a different question. <laughs> okay, let me, I guess, close this, I don't need it. So I misspelled demos, but that's a different thing, there we go. But it actually seems to be working, so we we did, we did what we wanted. Um, so I will export this to the GitHub. Meanwhile, if you guys have any questions, feel free to send them while I'm trying to figure out how to export that. Grand access, uh, we need to grant it over here. Yes, thank you very much, authorize. Okay, um, yeah, so that, that's basically it, I guess, for the day stream. I guess we can, we can, um, you know what, let's, let's maybe add some descriptions. Uh, go ahead. Uh, can you check these courses? Do send them over. I will check whatever you uh, share because I always like to discover new things. Right. Simple telegram bot that collects um, links, gets titles for them and categorizes them according to user input. There you go. That's all I wanted to do. And now we want to advanced export to GitHub. Oh dear. Okay. Building X with JS. Do I need to create a repo first? This will export your project. Your repo needs to have at least some files in it. Okay. So we first create the repo. So BXJS telegram bot. Whoops. Simple telegram bot for link gathering. Uh, initialize with a readme, add a license file MIT. We don't care about git ignore for now. I mean, does it work? Uh, which courses? I don't really see any links. Maybe the Twitch cuts them. Uh, okay, so we did that. Now let's copy this. No, 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 not delete. This is like building the bot for an hour and then just delete everything. Okay, um, updated with glitch. Yes, let's go. Okay, now I can see the link. Let's have a look at this. No JS masterclass, no frameworks, no NPM, no. <laughs> like this part is, um, I guess I kind of get where it comes from. It's like the core of Node is, large and there's a lot to learn about but learning node.js without learning npm is uh, i don't know i mean man watch a sample lecture nike sap ernst and young visa i like i don't know man it's like restful api building a restful api in node.js without npm for reals like do you want to do that like you can yes you can use http and crypto and all this stuff but it is subpar experience subpar developer experience and subpar user experience because there are better libraries that do better job at for example crypto right because the core crypto module in node is okay but there are better c plus plus versions so yeah, I like, I don't know if you want to do that because it's like, what do they have here? GitHub repo, structure contact. What is, okay, so the first two lessons is essentially what is Node.js and how to work. Parsing, um, I, yeah, I, like, I don't know. I mean, it's up to you to decide if, if you want to do that, but 
it seems like you can basically do the same by just reading the node core docs because the documentation is really good in node. Like if you if you never read the node.js docs, then okay, we got the glitch. Ah, okay, it actually creates it in a different branch. That's interesting. And it creates a database file which should not be here. Can I delete it from here right away? Yes, I can. There we go. I'm just gonna do that. We don't need it over here. So we got shrink wrap YAML. What is that? I guess there's some glitch thing. Okay, we got the package and uh, yeah, that seems to be good. So let's do the pull request into master. Uh, import code from glitch. I should probably check it out locally actually and um, set up the what do you call it? The prettier and all that kind of stuff. And maybe add some user, uh, the unit test and things like this, because this is right now is very jank, but uh, how long have I been actually streaming? Let me have a look. Been streaming for just slightly more than an hour. And well, that's, you know, it took us slightly more than an hour to build a bot from scratch without knowing pretty much anything about, um, about Telegram bots. So yeah, seems to be working. I know that glitch limits the app. So if, you, if I close this now, it will stop working, I believe in one hour or so. So I will, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, they have this system status. They have the limitations described somewhere. Was it system status help about, was it about glitch? No, this is about glitch. Help center, getting started. Uh, Private data, technical restrictions. There we go. Yes, project sleeps after five minutes if it's not used. There we go. So, and more than 12 hours is just, so, I mean, it's good for development and it's nice to test things, but you know, if you want to run a long running thing, you either, I think you can just buy the private package. I'm not sure if they have it or just do it publicly, right? So, but yeah, uh, it's a nice environment. Right, guys, um, what will be the next coding live stream? I have no idea, to be honest. I mean, let's check out the proposals wrap. I haven't, like, I haven't had time in ages and, you know, I'm kind of getting back into my normal schedule slowly now. So there's make a game. We, we could make a game. I doubt there's going to be one thing. Polymer, that's actually could be fun. So I've, uh, I haven't touched Polymer in quite some time. I tried like Polymer one last time. And it's already Polymer 3 or maybe even 4 now. So let's see, Polymer Project. Yeah, it's still 3, okay. So I can play around with uh, Windows 10 as a development system. That could be fun as well because there's been a ton of things changed now and there's some incredible things in Windows 10. Um, AI, configuring your ID. Yeah, so we can pick something, you know. We can figure it out. Don't forget you can go into the... Proposals repository and GitHub and vote on whatever you want to see in the next live stream. You, I missed your messages, Anko. I'm really sorry. Let me have a look. You understand and work really fast with new libraries. I waste too much time reading and understanding. Well, um, so the thing is that I've been soft developing software for the past 20, f no, wait, let me think for the past 20, 22 years, I guess, like as a hobby. And then if you take professional, it's been like 14, 15 years. So I, I got paid for it, right? So at some point, you just know that, you know, most of the libraries are built in more or less the same way. There are typical patterns. And once you know those patterns, you don't need to spend that much time to, you know, figure out what the hell is going on. So it just comes with experience, basically. That's, that's it. So just keep going. And at some point, you will be as fast as me. There is not, there's no magic about it. It's just practice, essentially, you know. Okay, um, right. Okay, do you guys have any other questions or things you want to discuss? If not, then I would suggest we wrap the stream up. Uh, can you show us how you create dot files with scripts uh, or VS? Yes, I can. Uh, I mean, what kind of dot files? That depends. I have my own dot file GitLab repo like private one where I, because I have like some private keys in there and because I'm lazy to you know make it public basically but if we're talking about like git ignore and stuff like this then I just create them from scratch because it's too easy if we're talking about es lint or whatever I have it like one in my root folder and just copy it everywhere 
there's nothing really else to say about that uh yeah yeah so i i as i said i just have my gitlab repo where i have my dot files stored and i just check it out on a new machine or um if it's like like windows for example like yeah i guess i can quickly show it to you here so uh duh, 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 duh. so i have here as you can see here so this is my github whoops github uh let me maybe make it slightly larger for you there we go so this is my dot files repo and as you can see here i have my public and private keys that's why i don't make it public right i have my alfred scripts here from macOS. i have my git config here i have a slint editor config docker config my gpg agent and stuff like this my z shell config the shell profile ts lint whatever you can imagine all this here and i just clone that and use it um as simple as that i don't make it public because again as i said i'm too lazy to uh hide the private stuff uh, yeah i know that a lot of people make their stuff public and it's all the props to them it's amazing that they're took they actually took time to prettify it and you know make it ubiquitous and even add some setup stuff you know because you can actually run like the bootstrap script here because i'm too lazy to do all of that i do it manually <laughs> but then again you know i don't really i'm not in the business of setting up machines every week or every day because i i need i need my dot files once every half a year maybe every year maybe even less whenever i set up a new machine i mean i've been using my development macbook for three years now i think and i don't really want to change it it's still fast as hell it's still good i mean my windows machine i just replug the uh, you know i buy the new gpu buy the new cpu buy the new ssd and it's good so it's been as well with me for like four years or something so yeah it's like i'm not the exactly the right person to talk about the dot files that are constantly updated oh yeah um, thanks, Anko. Really glad to hear that you are enjoying watching me code, essentially. <laughs> it's really, really cool to know that there are people that just like to watch me do things. <laughs> really flattering, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yes, exactly. This is, this is what I do. I create config locally. I just commit it to the Git repo and then push it and clone it every time I want it. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I do, is at least, you know. And since like you can have a private repo on GitLab, Bitbucket, whatever you like, you can don't care, you, you know, you can push whatever the hell private tokens or whatever you want, it's going to be okay. Yes, then you don't need any fancy script. What is that? I don't think that's supposed, what? Really cool domain. <laughs> okay, no, thank you. Um, yeah, so I mean, the, I guess, you know, if you're okay with using scripts, then it's also fine, but uh, Git is... I just like Git because it's so straightforward. <laughs> um, terminal scripts are scary. No, they're not scary. I mean, Bash is, you know, the shell scripts is just another programming language. You just have to sit down, learn it once, and then it's just as easy. Like, okay, maybe not as easy as JavaScript because it has even more problems than JavaScript, to be honest. Like, <laughs> there are some problems with shell scripts. But it's not hard. Like just just learn it once, and you will be able to use it everywhere. All right, I think that will be a good point to stop the stream, guys. I am getting slightly tired. Um, we're getting some weather jumps again, so you know might get more headaches, which I, I thought like totally hate that stuff. But yeah, let's see how that goes. All right. Um, ah, okay. So it's, okay, I see. You're just lazy. <laughs> Like me, perfect, I like it. But okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the stream, hope you enjoyed the bots. Feel free to build your own bots, feel free to fork the project on GitHub or fork it on Glitch, I don't remember how they, they I think they call it Remix or something. Um, hope you found something useful, hope you learned something new today. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Be sure to subscribe on Twitch. Be sure to leave your ideas of what I should build on streams on GitHub. There should be a link in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to ask your questions in the comments as usual. Welcome to our Discord server. If you have any questions or have any problems, I will be more than happy to help you. There's as well other people who will be help, um, who will be able to help you if I'm not there. And uh, yeah, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.